Hi everyone, this is Ellie May with Silhouette Secrets Plus and today I am going to expand on the tutorial that I did last week. It is in the description below. There is a link to it. I'm not going to go through step by step on creating from the very beginning, um, but I'm expanding on that and showing you how you can use additional tools in the Silhouette Studio software to create even more with this same technique. So what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to show you how you can use some of your Silhouette Studio designs and do the pattern fill with it to do this stacked card technique. So you aren't just limited to pattern paper. This tutorial, you do need business edition in order to follow the steps. So we're going to be taking a design from that's in the Silhouette Design um, Library and we are going to be saving that as a JPEG, or you could use a PNG file. I'm gonna demonstrate a JPEG file. And we're going to turn that into the stacked card technique. So the first thing that I wanna do is I don't need to recreate the wheel every time I do this thing. I can open my file, which I have opened here on my screen. This is the design that I did last week in the tutorial, and we cut and I showed how to assemble that on the tutorial. Um, it is linked in the description. Make sure to like and subscribe on this video if you'd like to be notified for further content on YouTube. Um, but today we're going to take this one step farther. So I'm opening this file. This I'm going to save as a template file. So then I don't have to do the work to get started all over again. Currently you can see on the screen that my file is filled in with the black layer, the pattern fill, um, all three of these stacked mats. So the easiest way we can do this is make sure that everything is selected on your screen. So I can, I can move this apart so you can see it. But those are the pieces of our card that I created last week. So I'm just gonna group those back together. Make sure everything is selected, all of the design. And then you can use your fill pattern or your fill color panel either in the quick access toolbar or on the right hand side is your fill panel and you can take the color out of that. And what that does, the little cross hatched here is your transparent fill. So now we have our pieces broken up. So I still currently have each of those mat stacks grouped together. But what we can do is I'm gonna undo that. I'm still gonna center them just to be sure, but I'm gonna select them all and I'm gonna right click and choose ungroup. And you can see all those selection boxes pop back up for each individual piece. So if I grab this one, it's the top panel of my card. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab or select every other one. So I'm clicking on the back largest rectangle and I'm holding my shift key down. And I'm going to click on each of the rectangles. Oh, I clicked off too soon. So we're going to start again. I hold my shift key down, click on the back click on the middle, click on the third one, and I'm gonna, it's not letting me do it. Okay, they're all selected. I'm gonna click up here. That's interesting. There, let me grab it. So sometimes it just takes a couple um, tries to get, get it done uh, because of all those red cut lines together. I can go ahead and I can fill this. I don't know what color I'm gonna cut it out of, but I'm gonna fill them all with black again. And you can see here's all my pieces for my mats for the patterns. Now I'm gonna go through the same exact steps, but first here is my template file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to file, save as, save to hard drive, and I'm going to save this stack template. So now when I go to make the next card, I can just come in and my file is ready to go. The next thing first that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you using a design from the Silhouette Library. So I'm gonna come over here to my library and I am using this design here. It's design 409508. And again, you will need to have business edition in order to follow these steps and to complete this project. You could do the same steps with an already created JPEG or PNG file but this is a cut file right now. So right now, what I'm gonna show you, you do need business edition upgrade in order to be able to save as a PNG. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on it to open it. In the version four software, you could get a couple pop-up windows. Um, this first one 
it startles people at first. Really, it means absolutely nothing. All it means is that the file was saved with a previous cut setting that the designer created. So the designer had their own cut setting created. It's not in my software. So that's what this little menu is telling you. It's missing. You have to set up your own settings when you go to the send tab anyhow. Somebody else's settings may not work for you. And I'll link in the description below um, about the perfect cut settings and why it's a myth. So this is just a pop-up that you can click OK on. The next one is a new feature in version 4.4 and it's print and cut. So if a file has print and cut data in it, so this is a graphic image with a cut line around it, it's designated as a print and cut file. It will automatically recognize that and you can have the software turn on those registration marks. I'm old school, I really don't care for it to be turned on because I always reset the defaults anyhow. So I like to go through the same steps that I've always created. You can click cancel or continue. If I click continue here, it's just gonna put those registration marks on the page. I actually don't need them for the process that I'm doing. So right here, you have your printed portion. You can see some of these files when they're print and cuts, they have this white background and that's because the image itself was originally a JPEG image. It's not an individual cut file. It doesn't cut out these individual pieces here. You have a cut line, a red cut line that goes around the image that if you were to send this as and set it up as a print and cut, it's going to cut around that outside image. If we zoom in here, you can also notice on some of these that the white doesn't actually extend the full length. Typically you're printing on white cardstock or white sticker paper when you're using this, so it doesn't matter. But you will notice if you try to do some things with it, like crop the cut line to, your, um, to the image, which is another little trick you can do, you're gonna have a little blank spot right here. It's gonna cut, um, cut it off, it'll, it'll make that cut line right along that edge of the white border. So there's a, just a couple things. Every design is different because every designer is different. So this one in particular, when I open it, it comes in and the file is grouped together. So the cut line with the image is grouped together. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna work with both, but I wanna right click on it and I wanna choose ungroup. When I do that, there's two selection boxes here that, that show up. I can move this out of the way. So I'm just gonna move it off to the side and this is where we're going to save this as a JPEG file. So JPEG is a photo file. Currently, it's a .studio file. It's, it is a silhouette proprietary file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna file with my design selected, with this graphic image selected. I'm gonna choose save selection, save to hard drive. That's where I save my files. And when you're exporting as any other file type, that's where you should save it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna name this um, flower, flower design. And then you wanna change, and this is where business edition is required. You wanna change the file type. So if I choose the drop down, I have business edition active on my computer. I get all of these different options. Even if you save it as an SVG, it's still going to cut a rectangle around it because it has no cut data. So what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna save it as a JPEG and we're gonna use it like a pattern. So we're gonna click JPEG and it's click okay. And then it automatically comes up with 150 dots per inch. And this is the quality that it would print out at. Now, I would probably, if I'm doing this for myself, I would probably just leave it at 150 that would print just fine with me. It would, should print the same as this image here, but 300 is your average. Now you wanna notice that when you change the dots per inch or DPI, you're also changing the pixels or the size of your image. So keep that in mind too. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click save and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to choose that design. So I saved it as a flower design and I can go ahead and I can 
you can open this up. It'll open on a new design mat and we have our image. Now what I wanna do is I wanna use this as a pattern, but I don't necessarily need to add it to my library. So if I come up here to my library, in the bottom right or bottom left, there's a patterns folder. Patterns that you add yourself to the library are go against your cloud storage. So it's going to eat up space. And since you save it as a JPEG or a PNG file, those are photo files. Those are larger files than an average cut file. So you could fill up your space quite quickly with patterns. We're gonna use it in a little different way today. So I could add it to my patterns folder. If I open up my, my computer, my, where my file is saved. So I'm gonna bring that window in so you can see it. So here on my screen, I have my files that I've saved. So this one is this flower design. If I come up here to view, I can change it to view large icons and it's gonna show. You can see I've been testing this. So I currently saved it as this flower design. I'm gonna use it directly from the file folder where it's saved. So I'm gonna click back on my design tab. I can close this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my stacked template. Now the first thing we have to do is we're going to select everything. Then I'm going to right click and I'm gonna choose make compound path. Now this is that magic technique that Teresa found by accident. So I am making that a compound path. Then I'm gonna open my folder where it is saved. And I can kind of squish this over so you can see both of them. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab this file, left click on my mouse, and I'm going to drag it onto my rectangles. I'm gonna hold it there until it fills it in the shape. And then I don't need this window anymore. So you can see it fills it in the exact same way if I drag it and I slowly move my mouse over my shape and wait it will fill the object. If you do it too fast, it won't fill that object or it'll come in and I can show that here. If I do it too fast or not on the shape, it's gonna just add it to my design mat. Now, since it's a fill pattern, it's gonna act the same way. So if I come over here to my fill panel, to the third tab at the top, and then click the advanced or in newer software, you may not have that advanced option. It may already be expanded for you. So I'm gonna click the advanced options. You're still going to have, and mine is extended for some reason. It's showing a blank space here. It's just a quirky thing because I'm on video today. I'm using the same exact version I used last week. So <laughs> things happen. You can adjust your angle, your scale. So what I'm gonna do is currently it comes in at 126, 126. I'm gonna scale that down a little bit. Now, you wanna also notice that it's going to tile it. So if I scale it out too far, it duplicates that image, it tiles it. The other thing you'll notice is that when I dropped it in, so if I look at this image, if I were to open up the flower design again, it's vertical. So when I dragged it onto my template, it is still vertical. So I could change this angle here and I could adjust it 90 degrees and then it's not, it'll be turned. And I could scale that back down a little again. The other thing I can do is if I click here to pan pattern, I can pan that and I can move it and adjust it. So you can play with this until you have it like you want. And really it doesn't matter if it's negative 90 or 90, you can always turn your paper after you've printed it. Um, you could, maybe you like it this direction and have those edges on it. You could put it at your zero degrees and then you could scale it up just a little bit more. And then once you're ready, we'll go ahead and do it this way. Once you're ready, I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna choose release compound path. And that's the magic. So now when I pull this away, it 
is all filled in the exact location where I had saved that. And then if you wanna see this on the screen, so what I think I might do is I'm gonna select all three of these. I'm gonna come up here and you can do this either here in the quick access toolbar, you have a little eyedropper here, or your fill color panel on the right side and your first tab is your color picker. You can use the eyedropper tool here. You could come in and you could pick out a color from your pattern. And then you could print this or you could find cardstock that was a similar color. Um, either way, I would probably just go the cardstock route and choose a dark green color that matched. You could really stack it with any color that you wanted that coordinated with your printed cardstock. So then we can take a look at how this is going to look. So I'm gonna select the top panels, I'm going to center them, and I'm going to group them. Right click and choose group. And then I'm gonna select the center panel here. You can see that it's behind because we reordered the how the layers were stacked when we did the compound path. But I'm gonna go ahead and choose group and you can see it brings it in front. I'm going to select the large rectangle and then control G is another group. So then once I have this, I can center it all together. You can see that that's how it's going to cut. And what I can do here is I, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. If you want to see exactly how it's going to look without that red cut line, I'm going to select everything, come up here to my line style, the second one over on your quick access toolbar is your line color, and I can change that to transparent. Or you can also find it under the line style panel on the right hand side, and your second tab is your line color. And then that gives us that color without having the red cut line around it. So now you have another way that you can save a file that's in your library with the business edition software you can save it as a JPEG. You could also use a PNG file. Um, I noticed something with the sizes when I was saving it to the sizes that I need to report, but you just keep in mind, if you get a little yellow triangle that shows up, let's see if I have it here. I don't have it here. If I were to increase this file size, the larger I go, with a JPEG or a PNG file, keep in mind it's a photo file. It's made up of pixels which means that you wanna use it as close to the original size that it opens as possible. If you get this little yellow triangle in the top left, it means low resolution. It may print in low resolution, which means that it's pixelated, it's grainy. That's why you see those images print grainy or photos print grainy, um, especially if you're saving something like from Facebook or through an email or um, it condenses those images and makes them smaller. So when you bring it into something like the Silhouette Studio software, it's a low resolution image. If at all possible, you always want to start with the original sized photo that you're working with. Um, that's just an extra tip for working with photos. But as you can see, if I undo what I just did, this was the original size of the image. If I increase that, I'm just going to go up here to like two, whoops, click on it up here to 200%. It automatically, I mean, it, it just automatically knows that when you increase that JPEG or PNG file, it could be low resolution because it doesn't have that data to reorder all those pixels. It's a flattened graphic image. That's what a JPEG or PNG file is. So if you want to do the print and cut process on this file, I have directions in the links below and I have more information and tutorials that back this up. Check out the part one of this series. I do it step-by-step step from the time that you create the entire um, stacked card. I give you all the sizes that I used. And then in the future, when you wanna do it, you can use, just save it and use it as a template file. I would love to see what you're creating. You can share on my Silhouette Secrets with Ellie Mae Facebook group. I hope you have a great day and happy cutting. Thank you.